So what is HTML? HTML stands for Hypertext Markup Language. It is not a programming language, but it is a markup language. It is used to structure web pages. It's used to create web pages online. And we can create some pages on our local environment in our computer in this case. Now, how does it look like? Well, HTML looks like this. We first start by typing in a left angle bracket, then a character, then enclosing that character with another bracket. In this case, it's going to be a right angle bracket. Then we have created a HTML tag. The next thing is to enclose something in this HTML tag. In this case, we're going to be enclosing a text. This text now is going to be enclosed in this HTML tag. Now, before we are done with it, we need to actually close this HTML tag. All right? And the closing tag looks very similar to that opening tag in the, in the beginning there. This is the closing tag right here. The only difference is that it has a forward slash, as you can see right here. So this will be called a closing tag. All right? So now this text was um, unformatted before we did anything to it, and now it's formatted. Now we have a whole bunch of different tags and basically we do the same thing we are doing with the first one. We enclose whatever we want in between those tags. Now the next one here is a, another piece of text that's enclosed in an H1 tag. Now this H1 is going to make this text a lot bigger. It's going to make it a heading. So it's going to be bold and it's going to be way bigger than that. Now we can always override those styles and those are called default styles by the browser. All right. Now not all HTML tags are going to be are going to have a closing partner. In this case the HR which stands for horizontal rule does not have a closing tag. All right. And there are many of them that don't have a closing tag. But I'm going to show you which one do and which one don't. All right. So let me just give you a little list here of some HTML tags just to give you an idea. All right. The strong tag makes things bolder, um, thicker, thicker text. The audio, you can put audio in your website. The form, you can put form elements for contact forms. Um, the I there that you see makes things italic. All right. So the H1 is a heading tag. So, I mean, there are many and many of them. I just wanted to give you a little list so that way you can be aware of some of them. Now, how does it really work? Well, we put a bunch of HTML tags in a text file, all right? And as you can see right here, this is a whole bunch of them. And I bolded the paragraph there because that's the only one that we will be able to see in the browser. Anything in between that body tag, which is right above that P tag, and right below you see the ending of that body tag. Anything between those tags are going to be visible in the browser. Anything above that body tag, like the head element there, that's the non-visual part of that document. All right, those things will be doing something else, and I will explain how they work later on. Now, when you grab all that text that you saw there, and you put it inside this text file, you need to save it with a .html extension. And we can put any name we want on that file. So I can name it index.html just to make it a homepage, or I can name it edwin.html, all right? That will create a web file, and you can upload it to your web server and work with that. All right now let's talk about CSS. CSS stands for cascading style sheets and it is used to control how a page looks. Very simple, it's just the styling of that document. All right, so how does it look like? Well, we first start a CSS rule by actually writing a selector. This is called a selector. In this case, we are selecting any HTML tag that has a P in it. All right, any P tag will be selected. We first write a curly bracket, opening curly bracket, then we close that curly bracket like this, right in, right curly bracket. In. Actually, we start with the left curly bracket and then with the right curly bracket at the, at the bottom there. Now, you can put as many spaces as you want between those brackets. It really doesn't matter. Then, after that, we write the property that we want to, uh, you know, override. So, we want to, let's say, change the color on the speed tags. And we put a, sem a colon to separate the property with the value. And this is what's going to change everything. So we're changing that property of that P tag, which is the color, for a red, all right, color. So we, we grab that value, and we can change that value. We can put black in it. We can even use codes to write colors. So we end this command by typing in a semicolon. We are telling the browser we're done with it. 
now you need to either you need to go down because we are done changing this property all right so it goes down to the next property and if it doesn't find the next property it will go down to that curly bracket that you see there and it will keep going to the next selector in the next case in the next uh, in the next case could be a h1 tag right below this right a h1 tag selector or maybe a body tag selector right it could be any of those so now let me just give you an example a little list here of some of the CSS properties that you might find out there these are common ones as you can see there are, and in this case there are very few there but there are many of them all right so you can see visibility will change the visible visible aspect of that property so we can make things invisible with a visibility property we can change the position with a position property there we can transform the text with that one there we can change the text family how the text looks we can align things we can change the color I mean we can do a lot of things to our elements in our document all right now how does it really work well we put a we put this text right that you see there all right because it is text in the beginning we put this in a text file and we put the selector with the properties and the values and all that and then we save it with a dot css css extension just like we did with a dot html all right this is the difference here when you change that extension because when you before you save the file you're going to have a dot txt extension which is for text right so you change all that and you take that extension off and you save it as a dot css this is going to make a CSS file. In this case, we are going to be naming it style.css, but you can name it whatever you want. All right. Some people name it style sheets. All right. So some people name it styles. I just name it style.css because I just wanted to, and for me, it looks good. All right. <laughs> so that's it. Now, that text, that text that you saw before the slides here is going to be like this in the browser. All right. We're going to if you remember we saw the p tag with the color of red and we are changing the font weight so we are making this font weight and the font weight is just how thick the text looks in this case it's going to be thicker than a regular paragraph right and the color is going to be red so this is how it's going to show in the browser when you save that file and of course if you link it to your document so anyways i hope this gave you an idea how html and css works right so I hope I see you in the next lecture and um, thank you so much for watching this and sorry if it was a little long but I wanted to get it over with and show you exactly what they are. So I see you in the next lecture and uh, let's go. Let's do it.